Let's get into predicting the future. So I'm going to predict first up that you're going to enjoy this very much because it's everything we like to do, right? We love to guess the different handheld specs or the, what's going to be the future of gaming. So first up, the Steam Deck 2, Valve is likely to announce this powerhouse in 2025. Here's what we might expect from it. Two USB 4 Type-C ports, a 70 watt battery, maybe even an 80 watt battery, and then performance of 8 to 12 T-flops is what I'm kind of guesstimating. And it's going to be around double the current Steam Deck, meaning we're going to be getting, instead of 30 frames per second in Elden Ring, we're going to be getting 60 frames per second. Some games are going to be beefed up, and then some will just get it like a 10, maybe 15 FPS increase, just depending on the specs and all that. I'm hoping for double the, the performance, because then we can maybe go beyond the lower end of specs and go into medium specs on a lot of games, especially even newer games. That's the hope here. And I think with this next prediction for the Steam Deck 2, I think 24 gigabytes of RAM is going to be the minimum that they're going to be doing with it. And if we're lucky, we'll get 32 gigab gigabytes of RAM. And the reason why I put this into play as an important aspect of what I'm guessing the Steam Deck 2 will have is because I think that's the future of handheld gaming. I think it needs bare minimum 24 gigabytes of RAM. I've seen too many games, even with beyond Steam Deck, like with the ROG Ally, limited by RAM. You can mess with the RAM, the VRAM, and all that with these devices to get a better balance, but at the end of the day, sometimes there's just not enough to go around. And 16 gigs sounds like a lot, but you got to remember it is shared, where VRAM can typically be between these days 6 to 12. That's like the with typical cards, and that's even really low for a normal desktop. Like They need to start... NVIDIA and AMD really need to start upping their VRAM. Some people think this is crazy. Maybe you're one of them. But I do think that 32 gigabytes is the bare minimum that we should expect in the future. I really think that we've been sold a lie in some ways. And I think especially with NVIDIA over the years on how important VRAM is. With the Unreal Engine 5 alone, that is a very important aspect is that it's a little VRAM hungry. Developers can optimize for VRAM usage, but I think it's better to run the side of caution and just bump that thing up a little bit. But I do think that the APU is gonna be very important for, for performance. Equally, the RAM will be important for long-term playability of these devices. And I think that it will be a 9000 series-esque. They, they do their custom chips. So how the Steam Deck 1 does it is that they have the Von Go, which is an older chip set that uses a lot of the older tech in the Steam Deck, partially because of the pandemic and also partially, I believe, because it's tried and tested and was a little less hungry on the power. So there's a good chance that they could go to 8,000 or 9,000 series tech, which if they do 9,000 according to the chart and according to like what the 7 and 8,000 series of AMD can do, if they really fine tune it and maybe even let us up that TDP a little bit along with adding that extra battery, we could easily see up to 12 teraflops of performance, which would more than double the current Steam Deck. But teraflops is not the only important metric with all this. It's just, it's an easy way to gauge it. So the current Steam Deck, I believe, is around 2.7 teraflops or maybe 3. Point, it's between 2 and 3. It's around that for the performance for the Steam Deck. So, but that's not all. Around the same time or shortly after, Valve could surprise us with another product line, maybe a self-contained Steam Reality VR system, I, maybe a new console similar to the Steam Machine that integrates seamlessly with the Steam Deck for streaming. It, I'm thinking that these are two big possibilities as we've gotten, I mean, since the Steam Deck was released, we've known that Valve is looking at virtual reality with Steam Deck components. The problem is virtual reality requires it to be a, as lightweight as possible or it really affects your neck. So if you slapped a Steam Deck, even a Steam Deck 2 to it and to the front, you'd have to have balancing weights on the back and you'd get quite a neck exercise, I think, with that. But there's no point in it. It may be a battery pack on the bat, lower back. I definitely think it would be cool to see a VR headset that is supported by like let's say a Steam Deck 2 system and just kind of like piggyback off that. But more than what's likely going to happen is that we'll get a Steam Deck 2 
in the next few years, we'll get some type of new virtual reality system from Valve with maybe a Portal or a Valve game along with it, because that's usually what they like to do. Within like a year or two of releasing new hardware, they usually like to have some type of either game or game that supports the playability on that so that you, it's sold as a package because they like to experiment. That's that's Valve in a nutshell. Experiment is Asus. ROG Ally 2, I think will be coming in holidays 2025, maybe early 2026. And it's not really rumored yet that there's going to be an Ally 2, but I, we can all assume that this is a, hardware, a gaming hardware company that does laptops. I think a lot of these companies that are getting into the handheld are going to follow a laptop model. I think it might peter out to maybe every other year, but as they're getting the kinks out of their system, I think they're going to follow a yearly update cycle. They don't have SteamOS and some other console-esque capabilities right now, even though the armory is really good, to make it indicative to have it long-term. Meaning, it like with a console-like experience, you usually plan on grabbing a console, hold on to it for a few years because you don't want to spend the money to upgrade. With the Asus and some and like Legion Go, they don't tend to have that stigmatism behind it. They are usually P, more PC minded people, I believe. They're usually going after the best of the best in that year. I think that's usually what, who goes after those types of devices. Else, you just stick with a Steam Deck because it's so easy to pick up and put down, unless you're obviously a Fortnite fan or something else like that. I think it's going to be about the same as the ROG Ally X, except for I think the ergonomics is the reports coming out from people reviewing it. The ergonomics aren't as comfortable as the ROG Ally, but it's not that much bigger technically, at least weight wise. And so they just have to work with the form factor a little bit more and also add a new chip, which most likely would be the Z2 Extreme chip. So right now the Z1 Extreme is similar to a 7000 series, 7840, I believe, U series AMD APU, which is pretty beefy actually and that has up to 12 teraflops i believe that's what they says like up to 12 teraflops of performance which is pretty crazy but i would not say that's been my experience using it though i would say it's probably closer to about eight teraflops of, exp of performance and that's with proper ram management if you throw ram management out of the window which with the ally x we should be able to meaning it should just be able to run like the RAM's not going to be the limiter. It's going to be the APU, which I'm fine with. And they're going to, I, I really do think that the ROG Ally 2 is going to be very similar to the Ally X with better ergonomics and with a better APU. With that Z2 Extreme, I think that AMD is going to continue working on. It, it just doesn't make sense not to. Like it, it, it's a pretty cool way to brand mobile handheld APUs is to keep up with their like so they'll have a z3 a z4 i think that's what we're going to see i think we're going to see a standardized way of amd handling handheld gaming which is good for us options are good for us i know i did a video recently on options being bad but at the end of the day i think options are good you can ignore the other options out there the differences between the steam deck the rj ally and the legion go are big enough to where there's an audience for each one of those. There's if someone wants a bigger screen, they go with Legion Go. If you like something a little bit more, well, with the ROG Ally, the original, something that's just a, a really good balance and has good software, then you go with that one. But you still want to be on the cutting edge. Or if you just want to ride that wave of easy gaming, but not really difficult titles that are newer, it's just how it is. It depends on the fidelity and the performance requirements for the game. But I do think that the ROG Ally is a pretty good balance between the Legion Go and the Steam Deck's weaknesses. So there's an option for everyone. And that's the beautiful thing about having multiple options. We got the Legion Go 2, which I think is going to be coming out in 2025 also. There's a chance that they could release it this year. They've even mentioned that they're going to, I believe the rumor is that they're going to be releasing something this year. But I don't think they're going to. I think that they're going to wait until next year. For at least the Legion Go 2 and probably that Z2 Extreme processor that will probably be standardized. It could be also that Asus has a pretty tight grip on it, but I believe the Legion Go has the Z1 Extreme processor in it, and which is just better fine-tuned for handheld gaming. So I think the Z2 Extreme will be like a better refinement from it. And who knows, maybe, nah, I, I doubt it, but maybe even the Steam Deck 2 will have it. I think the Steam Deck or Valve is working with AMD to develop the next gen, which we've already seen a lot of different articles on. Okay, 
So with the Legion Go 2, like I said, I think 2025 is going to be the sweet spot for the Z2 processors. And I think we're going to see devices release in that cyclical kind of manner. When there's a new Z processor out, I think these two will follow suit. Now, the Legion Go 2, I think, will have a bigger battery. It will probably go f to maybe, because I think right now, right, it is around 50 watt battery. I think they'll bump that thing up to maybe a 70. Who knows? Maybe they'll get brave enough and do an 80 and try to match the ROG Ally, which is, I think, a little too optimistic. I think 70 watts, they might be able to fit into that form factor that they have. But I do think that are also going to improve those detachable controllers. I think they're going to make them a little bit more comfortable and not so movie. Like, you you get them strapped in there and they kind of move a little and with how big it is it's very it's much more noticeable than the switch the switch even does it a little like it has a little bit of wiggle but i didn't because it's so light i didn't notice it on the switch as much but with the legion go i did that being said it doesn't bother everyone it does bother me but not that much it's just it would be nice that they're more ergonomical in my opinion i think some edges on them just weren't very comfortable for long-term gaming yeah better ergonomics for sure i think is going to be in play for this maybe even better because honestly it doesn't look great maybe to make it look a little bit fancier now a completely new software experience comparable to asus armory i think is also something that they're gonna need the worst part about the legion go was the software for me when i used it they used something similar of their own making and armory is an asus product anyways or a uh, software package i just didn't like it it was too slow clunky didn't work sometimes and even the armory has this issue every once in a while but for the most part it worked pretty good honestly i would say their error rate of the is the same as with the steam deck so i definitely think that they're going to re who knows if lenovo is going to rethink their handheld software completely but i think they should i think they need to start from the ground up it, the experience on that is really bad and because they use two different software packages i, I believe it's two separate at least the ui indicates that the how you manage the like playing videos and all that and also managing the games and managing everything it's just it it seems different and so i don't know i think they should start from scratch and improve it and make it more better because it's not that great now let's get into the next prediction steam os3 now i think steam os3 is going to i it, i'm not sure if it's ever going to see the light of day alternatively it could go public for other devices in 2025. If not, other operating systems could dominate the Linux gaming scene. Thanks to the groundwork laid by Steam OS, uh, Bazite OS is good, but not all deck compatible games run on it, as I've quickly found out with my ROG Ally running it. Like, Bazite is, is actually really close to the Steam Deck. That's what, essentially what they're trying to do, at least with the ROG Ally. I believe there's a version for the Legion Go also, but it it works really good, but if you want to play Cyberpunk 2077, it does not work with it. And I think it's because it has a thin client launcher, like the launcher that CD Projekt Red requires with 2077 does not work with Bazai. And I have a feeling it's a custom install script. And honestly, something that would be cool to see them include with Steam itself, not included with Steam OS. So hopefully they change that because that thin client should work fine anywhere else on Linux that is compatible or semi similar to Steam OS's Arch. So I'm hoping for Steam OS 3, but I'm really at this point, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more Linux operating systems pop up in flavors, which is always indicative of Linux. That's just how Linux works, right? So I'm not surprised by this in any measure that we're seeing stuff already kind of take the Steam OS's place because they, they're not releasing anything. Like I said, though, it, it's even got a smaller amount of games that are supported than Steam OS and Steam Deck because those thin clients and certain games that are just require some additional custom install scripts. So we'll see what, what happens in the future, but it is cool right now. Then we have the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. So the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate is something that they've worked on for years. It's not growing really that well. I don't know if they're going to continue doing it or even bet on the future. But by 2026, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate will likely be ambiguous, even on the Steam Deck, potentially. It will probably be on a bunch of different, honestly, just every TV. You can expect it to, I think, be on every TV by 2026 that could supports controllers and certain, like every new smart TV, you know, anything that supports a controller and certain codexes or processing speeds that Xbox Game Pass is going to require. And just to kick this off as a 
confirmation of this that this is going to happen is that the Amazon Fire Stick TV Fire Sticks are supported. And we'll talk a little bit more a little bit later on this, but the Fire Sticks they just came out. They're going to be compatible with the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which is the streaming portion of it, not the cloud-based gaming service, not the game library that you can play on Windows. So take with that you what you must, but I think it's good. I think it's a good idea that these systems work everywhere we can. It, it, it knocks down. Like, some people aren't going to like that. They might like more, but it's going to knock down the walls for people that can't afford as many big purchases. They can support maybe monthly payment and they have games at all times that, that's very predictable. That's the one thing that's nice about subscriptions over buying games all the time is that it's very predictable. Subscription service and I will have access to a lot of games that I like and just call it that. Get a controller, of course, with it and you have a nice little setup for potentially cheaper than what you'd buy an Xbox Series S so or X. That's my prediction is that X, Xbox is going to continue to dominate the cloud gaming space, and then eventually we'll see PlayStation maybe get into it. Now, my wild prediction, and this is a prediction that's going to be like 10 years away, so this is not a very fair prediction, but it's a wild prediction. It's the hook that I gave you earlier on. I think Valve is going to be coming out with something even more special because blessed Gabe Newell, Gaben, has a lot of stuff he's been working on. I think that Steam is going to release, or Valve is going to release, the Steam Neuro Deck. It would be cool to see that my prediction's true. But whatever they call it, this is by far my wildest prediction. But by 2035, I think Steam might release a brain-computer interface called Steam Neuro Deck. Steam Headspace, or maybe Steam... Neuralink. Gabe Newell, co-founder of Valve, has been quietly working on the BCI tech for years. We'll see what the lawsuits happening with Valve and Steam, mainly Steam. I mean, Steam and Valve are essentially the same company at this point. But Steam has ha been under fire an almost near $1 billion lawsuit in the UK, I believe. And we don't need to go into that, but it could affect this a little bit, maybe some funding. But I, I think we could, uh, like, enhanced immersions. Like, you think of, the brain-computer interface right now isn't really meant for visuals. It's meant for, like, you just think about it in a certain way, and if it's on the computer or some type of interface, it will happen. So I definitely wouldn't say that, like, it was, if it was, like, you used your mind to control the gaming experience with no physical controller will be the next step. I don't know. I feel like people are too ingrained with controllers, but if you can project it in my eyes, which that sounds really scary talking about it, the image and maybe a way to control it or maybe even take yourself out of this reality in some ways to something that would be like a dreamlike state, induce you into a dreamlike state where you, you have a more lucid dream and then you have a world virtually displayed in it where you can interact with it, but parts of it are outside in a, in a computer, right? I think this would be a very interesting concept. There's so many different medias, mediums, that is movies, TV shows, animes, and all that, that have discussed this. And I think 2035 is obviously maybe too soon for something like this. This is what I think most people want virtual reality to turn into. But I definitely think that the start of it, meaning the BCI wouldn't be something that would be truly revolutionary, but it will be the start. It will be maybe being able to control the game with your mind in the beginning, and this would definitely help people that have lost a lot of motor skills or have lost all their motor skills. So it'd be a very big accessibility thing for people to just start working into, but it would also benefit everyone else that wants a more realistic experience. Obviously, you know, esports might be more interesting. The Olympics this year has very weird esports. They have esports, but they're not what you'd expect them to be. And we'll get into that later into a later show. But let's just say that I, I, I think the BCI could be a really cool new way for especially people that are just can't physically do sports to maybe try it out that way. I don't know how you'd build up endurance or build up reaction times and all that with the BCI, but there's definitely a lot of things that could be really cool about it. But of course, there's the ethical and security considerations. The industry must address ethical and security concerns to protect player data and mental privacy, especially, right? Like, do you trust the government to regulate this? As much as people don't like the government sometimes, that's what they're for, is for regulatory things like this to make it so that you don't have ads pop up in front of you or your mind data being mined. Like, they literally mine your, your freaking mind data, your data, your brain, your thoughts. 
mining your thoughts sounds horrible. So I'll have to just say, we'll see if Steam pulls this off. If another company breaks into this like true virtual reality space before a big company takes the risk, I think that's what's going to happen. I think a smaller company is going to come in. A big company will probably buy it. I don't know if Valve or Steam is considered like too big of a company to venture into this, but I definitely would love to see Steam do their thing like with the Steam Deck. It's a far-fetched prediction. I don't know if it will come true. You guys probably definitely be like, wow, he's crazy, but I think it's fun. And it could still tie into handheld gaming. <laughs>